That's classic. We bring you great laughs and a unique behind-the-scenes look at classic television shows and movies. I'm John Cato. I'm an actor, voiceover artist, and also bring you an amazing insight as a moderator with over 20 years' experience in the television industry. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video and the notification bell so you can be notified when I release my next episode. Enjoy. Once again, we have a great, great episode on That's Classic. We have none other than Wesley Ure and Kathy Coleman from Land of the Lost. I mean, come on. That's a fun one. Guys, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Well, it's great. It's really, really wonderful to have you both on. Um, so just to get going, I mean, my first question really is, do you remember like your initial audition? Uh, and I guess we'll go, you know, first, why don't we start with Kathy and then we'll go to Wesley. Do you remember your initial audition for Land of the Lost? Who are we going to first? You. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, it's all about you. <laughs> We'll start with Kathy on that one. <laughs> I do. I do remember. And uh, I went back a number of times. Some of the times stand out more to me on the callbacks than others. Um, I remember meeting Wesley. I actually t still have a photo of us from that day. We're Seriously? just sitting. Yeah, we're just sitting on the floor in the office and we're in casual clothes and it's, it's a really sweet photo. Um, I love it. But anyway, another wow. time I went in on a callback and I walked in and I saw Phil Paley there, who I knew and had worked with prior to Land of the Lost. So on what? I said, I said, oh, we did a Cheez-Its commercial together. Oh, OK. And so I but I knew him even before that. So I've known Phil almost my whole life. But anyway, so I said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm I'm because sometimes auditions have three or four things in one building, you know, and yeah. I, he said, I'm trying out for this show called Land of the Lost. And I said, so am I. And he said, I'm, I'm trying out for the part of this monkey. And I was like, <laughs> cool. So anyway, yeah, those two stand out. And then the third, the last one. Yeah, my mom had promised me a pony if I ever got a TV series. And when they said you got it and we signed the contracts, my mom took me that day and got me a pony. Where, where did you have like the facility for it or whatever? No, I mean, but that's, like that's why I had out. to have. No, that's why I had to have a series because we were going to board him and all of that kind of stuff, you know. Wow. So yeah. how long did you have the pony? For about uh, two years, and then I got too big for him, and then I needed a bigger horse. But I got to mention his name on Land of the Lost. The, the writers wrote it in for me. Really? What what, yeah. what was his name? His. I got to say, in one scene where we were reminiscing about home, I got to say, I miss Comanche. Wow. And that was my pony. Talk about being able to go to, like, a real space to yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was That's really cool. cool. Well, Wesley, how about you? What what was your uh, you know audition process? Mine was really simple. I, I was on Days of Our Lives. A right. friend of mine, Bruce Ostrand, yeah, Bruce Ostrander said, hey, I'm going to go to a pool party at Sid's Cross House. So <laughs> I went to Sid's house. It was just a couple of us around the swimming pool. I'd never met Sid Croft. And of course, oh, you know, I mean, I was in awe. It was Sid Croft. Yeah. And, you know, and stuff. And I mean, you know, Sigmund. And Sid looked at me and goes, you, you need to audition. I've got a new show coming up. Here's the casting lady's number. Call her on Monday. I called her on Monday. Sid, Sid just said on his talk show, he said, uh, I walked in the office with, at NBC and the casting people. They said, he's got the job. So I, I didn't wow. basically audition. And then they cast everybody around me. Uh, that's why Spencer Milligan, who played my dad, looked so much like me. Because they wanted really to somebody that looked like me. Yeah, I've noticed that, you know, in a lot of the shots where it'll be like your face and Kathy and Spencer. I've looked and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like you, even like the same nose or the same like, yeah, you know, there's exactly. like bone structure there. It's that's trippy. It really it was, is. Yeah. And Sid, oh. Sid, to this day, Sid is a friend of mine and we talk to everyone. Well, I don't talk to Sid. I listen to Sid Cross. <laughs> you call Sid and you don't have a conversation. You have a listen for about an hour, which is and it's the best listen in the world he talks about his world of people that come to, he has this house it's like a hobbit house that he's had for 
50 years in, in wow. two, three acres in a, in a ravine kind of thing in, in the Hollywood Hills. And it's like the brickwork is all over the place, the fireplace with his parrot and his animals. And it's like going through a jungle and it's everything you would want Sid Cross House to be. Okay, that's really cool. I'm glad you shared that. That's really neat to know that he lives. But he'll he'll sit and say, "Oh yeah, I remember when Michael Jackson was over here, or or, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Liz Taylor stopped by." And I mean, he tells these stories of all these people that used to show up at his house, and because I mean, he's Sid Croft, and the story, Mama Cass. I mean, all these, uh, you know, if you're as old as I am. Oh no, I know, I know, I know all about Mama Cass. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Kathy, did you, when you were with Wesley at that audition, did you have a feeling like, oh, well, we're, you know, we've got good chemistry here? I, I liked him. I liked him. I liked Spencer. I liked the whole environment that I was in. It was all new to me. I had never um, been that close to a series before. I had auditioned, but, you know, Sometimes even on a first call back, they went with somebody else because of hair coloring or just sure. whatever reasons they, you know, there's a million and one reasons why. Too tall, they too short, it. too whatever. Yeah, else. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I'll tell you something. I was thinking of it today when I was going to get my mocha frappuccino. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wesley always says that, you know, not only did the Crofts give him a TV, a successful TV series, but they also gave him a family. That's something Wesley says all the time. Wow. And I was thinking, not only did they give you a show and a family, but with that came this magical force. And the force is, is that a lot of people have television shows and they love each other and have a good time working. And if you can see my hands, they, yeah. they go their separate ways and sometimes they come back and then they go again and then they don't ever come back. We have gone like where there's years where we've been separated and it's like big like that. And then we come back. And as the years have gone by, the, the comebacks in the circles get smaller and smaller and smaller. And now and it's so nice to grow older and and grow with Wesley close and now we're neighbors <laughs> and we've oh. never lived in the same neighborhood in our entire life. In the last few years, we've been in the ocean together. We've been to movies. We've done all these things that we had never done. We had worked together and we do these oh conventions, but now we're doing things like, like, you know, just like brother and sister stuff in, in reality. Like, and oh my it's, gosh. Kathy, it's really Kathy, wonderful. Kathy dropped off a, a mocha frappuccino at my door today. She knocked on the door and delivered it and left. <laughs> okay, seriously, come on. <laughs> that is really cool. She's, though. I, she is I, truly my sister. I mean, uh, I, ha I have a, a real sister in life, a, a biological sister, but I got Kathy Coleman, and she is very much my sister. That is so cool. Now, what about, what about Spencer Milligan? Have you, ha has he... You know, no, he's close. Spencer is crazy. He's, he's a crazy old coot is what he is. <laughs> and uh, he lives in a fabulous uh, estate up in up in the northern part of the country. Beautiful estate. A gorgeous home. He'll call me and go. Hello, Wesley. <laughs> this is your Papa speaking. Oh, my <laughs> uh, gosh. And he, I go, he oh, never lost the role of our father. Like yeah. even in, in, when we see him, we did one convention with him in Milwaukee. It was the only one he's ever done. It's my hometown. And, um, he, yeah. he, he, like when we first saw him, he, he embraced all of us. But during the course of the, the show over the weekend, I watched him and he made special time to spend with each and every one of us. Wow. And it was really beautiful. Yeah, I loved. I love him to death. He's we like love, a dad yeah, to me. We're, we're all very, very close. And Phil Paley, uh, Chaka, we yeah, are all. He's he's like a brother, and you know, the four of us are are a really solid unit. Wow, that is so cool. I mean, seriously, you. I, I think Kathy hit it on the head. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people, and you're. You, that is not always the case. By oh any no, way. we we know we know actors from other shows that won't even sit in the same room with each other. Right, right, exactly. And that, that magic, that magic that I talked about, that that with this whole thing about all that, that yeah. magic transfers over to our fans. 
they may not see us for years and years, but when they get back together, boom, it's like they never left the screen of being eight wow. years old. Wow, it's it's, it's cool. really amazing. Yeah, you're you. I, I've 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 looked at various interviews and I've seen like live shots of you guys at like the conventions and stuff, and you have so much fun. You know, it's like it's like you know, <laughs> this is just for real. And then you know, guilty. Cool. <laughs> Kathy and I, we, we made a decision a long time ago. So you go to, if you go to a lot of the conventions and you, and you meet performers and, and actors and you ask for autographs, I mean, you, you end up with the photo like, you know, one of right. those. And we said, yeah. we've got to create an experience. If we're going to be there, let's have fun. So we bring our yellow raft. I love blow that. it up with way. yellow life jackets, yellow oars. We put our fans in it and we scream and hold the sleeve stack heads up in the air and scream oh. like we're going over the waterfall at the open credits. And we, we, and we couldn't bring, like we did Star Trek last week. Yeah. We're, we're the only show other than Star Trek that's allowed at the conventions because our show was written by Star Trek writers. Oh, that's right. David that's Gerald, right. Had, uh, Trouble with Triples. He was our head writer. Walter mm -hmm. Koenig, Chekhov, created Enoch. And Mike Westmore created our monsters who did all the Star Trek monsters. So oh, we couldn't right. bring the yellow raft. So Kathy and I go, what can we do? And we found... A, a cardboard dinosaur that looks like Grumpy with a hole cut out in the mouth where you put your head in. It's for a kids' party. Oh you my! Put your God. head. It looks like the dinosaur is eating you. Well, we had. I mean, we had more fun with fans. And if you go to our Facebook pages, you can see some of the photos. And uh, it's it's. You know, we just have a lot of fun. I mean, we we yeah. want to create it. Also, also with that interaction, what what we've created, and and you see it in these people because. Everybody wants to be a television star, right? They, oh, want that. Yeah, they just want to at least have that experience once in their life. Well, by the time they are costumed, they have dialogue, they're in the raft, they're oh, they come blocking, on. there's blocking. Everything oh. that an actor experiences, we give them. And oh. so it's, it's action. And we go, one, two, three, ah! ah! And they do that. <laughs> we Sometimes we sing the song with them. Oh, and, we always see the dog. At the end, at the oh, end, what's wow. so funny is they, they're getting out of the raft, just like you would get out of a set situation, and they're taking off their wardrobe, which is their life jacket, jacket. Oh. and handing back the props. And you know it. I can feel it and see it, that they feel like they were in a scene. Because Wesley stands in front of it, directing them. He's like, okay, <laughs> and this is what I awesome. want. I want y'all hands up. I want drama. I, you are going over a thousand foot <laughs> waterfall and, and he is the directing. And so they really get the feeling like they just were in a scene. And oh, it's, that it's, is it's so wonderful. cool. Yeah. It's cool. Okay. That's, that's really special. Like that's on a whole nother level. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All, all for the pr same price. <laughs> all for the price. <laughs> One thin guy right this way to the front. Come house. on in. Oh my God. That's funny. What? Um. Oh God. What was I? I, I had so many things going in my head. Oh, so is Phil, is Phil Paley normally at the conventions with you or is, is, that not we, yes, we we try very hard to get all three of us there. A lot of the conventions, because the budgets can only afford to bring two or one, and every time we get booked, we always say, "Do you want? Can can we bring Phil?" And depending mm -hmm. on their budgets, hopefully they said yes. But we always try to bring everybody. But just because of limited budgets and space and tables and stuff, many conventions can't bring in three, three actors from one show. Oh, I see. I got you. I got you. What, did, by the way, I, I, I enjoyed like going back. It was just a lot of memories, just going back and like researching and looking into, into things with the show. The one thing that got to me was that there was actually a linguist that created the Pukuni language. It, is that true? Like, was she around? Like, what was that all about? Yeah, her name was Fromm, and she was a linguist at UCLA. And it, there's actually, I think, yeah, UCLA. And she took, I forgot, eight different languages and combined them. The syntax, and there's an actual dictionary with Pakuni. So when Phil Paley, you have to understand, Phil is 10 years old playing Chaka. Wow. And he's, he's, the, he's the youngest black belt in karate in the United States. His teacher was mm -hmm. Chuck Norris. And That's he was on amazing. The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and he flipped Johnny Carson over. Phil's like this tall. Johnny's way up. And that's how he got the job. They saw him on The Tonight Show and realized that he had the physicality. Well, he also had the acting chops because he, he has some of the episodes. He speaks Pakuni the whole show. 
And he couldn't just, it wasn't gibberish. He had to learn, you know, Oganza, Bisasa, big magic, Wira, Ari, Marciara. It was Will Marshall Holly. And, um, but all the language was, was correct. That's amazing. I mean, also, really, that is amazing. If I can add to that, at, sure. at this, as I speak, um, Phil is doing the Sid Croft show. It's a podcast. Yes. With oh. the tagger, and, and it's a graffiti tagger, but he's extremely famous in Los Angeles because he tagged everything that you can believe. Wow. And his name, he, his tag name is Chaka. So Chaka was literally all over every overpass on freeways when he got arrested he tagged the police car when he was in the courtroom he tagged the the courtroom so he's doing all this tagging all wow. over la with the name chaka okay and so wild. phil and this tagger are both doing sid show which i so, said to phil you better get me up one of those you know uh prints of his i wanted even though he no longer is a tagger and he's cleaned up his act and everything right but he still is an artist and i oh, want yeah. one i'll hang it in my living room oh definitely that would be so cool yeah so cool it's so um, weird. it's so weird with land of the lost because it's become part of the lexicon like chaka which there's what, what's the band that had chaka on the drum set oh nirvana 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 oh, wow what a wow in teen then, spirit if you look at the video teen spirit it's yeah, across yeah. his bass drum. Oh, wow. wow. We, were watch, we were watching, you watch news broadcasts and stuff. The other day I was watching and somebody said, oh, yeah, he's like a slee stack. You know, mm -hmm. somebody really tall. Oh, my and, God. So it's become part of the, the, you know, the lexicon. Listen, David Gerald, Trouble Triples, you know, I mean, he, the, creating these names, which was, I mean, slee stack, Chaka, all these yeah. things that have become part of. Of American we were, Trouble. Wesley and I were tripping out last night that that word slee stack has never been said before. <laughs> like that literally word? it was just created. Yeah. David just thought of this word that was not, that's really hard to do. That is hard to do. And something that's that catchy. I yeah. mean, it fits. But it's come perfect. up with a word that's never been used. That's that's like so mind-boggling. I heard him at a convention. He was asked by a you know, panel, why that name? And he said, I wanted something that had kind of the reptilian sound to it. That's yeah. Oh, that yeah. He stack. He was and the stack to... being them so tall, you know, right, 10 right, feet tall. Right. And, you know, I mean, for all, and if you're a basketball fan, Bill Lambeer. Yeah, I was just going to ask Michigan, about Bill. Yeah, Bill was a slee stack. You know, he's the nasty, mean guy of basketball. <laughs> but but when he was in college, he was one of the slee stack because we had three costumes. That's all. And, and they rotated these college guys in for the three years. And Bill was one of them. Did you remember, like, I, I know I've seen that photo of you guys with the, the heads and you're next to Bill. Um, did you, did you, when he was on the show, did you like, you know, interact with him enough that you kind of knew, knew him beforehand? Not, not in his basketball sense. He, they, these guys were still like 19, 18, 19 oh. years old when they were doing Land of the Lost. He had yeah. not become a, a Detroit Piston at that point. Okay. All right. He was still oh. playing college ball at that time. Yeah. He was not in professional basketball yet. But like, did you, was it like as time went by and you found out that he was a Detroit Piston, was it like, oh, I we know him from before? Or was it kind of like the after effect? Like, oh, that's right. He was a, sl a slee stack. It was kind of for me. I, I didn't really put it together for a long time. Mm -hmm. Somebody finally said, you realize that that was a slee stack. You know, so and, and, and you're right, we Kathy and I went and surprised him in Vegas. He was coaching the Aces, and we we showed up. It was set up by the league. All the women, the, the women's basketball team, the women had an eight by ten of a slee stack, and we walked, and he didn't know we were coming. They oh, held wow. up in front of their face a slee stack photo, and he was like, whoa, because you know, I mean, first of all, he's seven feet tall. Yeah, and I was say he walked in, and, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but we don't quite look like we used to. Uh, <laughs> so it took him a moment to figure out who we were, but he could not, you know, he was like, because he's known for being really nasty playing bass. Oh, come right. on. He's got a rep. Yeah. So at the end of the thing, it's all, we've done our photos, we've done the news broadcast, we all that stuff. And he's like, I gotta, I gotta go coach. So he leaves and the head of the league comes up to us and said to Kathy and I, he goes, you know, I got to tell you something. I've known Bill since he was a, a college ball player. I have never seen him smile this much. 
Oh, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Because he is, he's always been known as a nasty, you know, yeah. whether it's true or not, you know, whatever. Oh, that's it's cool. True. It's, true. it's true. We missed an opportunity there. We should have brought the raft, Wesley. Oh, I, I know. I know. <laughs> that would have been hysterical, by the way. Um, so uh, did you, now, one, you know, one thing that I read too is Spencer Milligan leaves the show. Uh, it was a, it was like a contractual thing, right? Like as far as like, he didn't feel he was, you were being paid enough or, yeah. or no, no, it was, uh, am I right on this? It was more because of the promotional merchandising. Merchandising. Yeah. 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 Where were you guys at with all that at the time? Were you upset as well? Or, or was it kind of like, you know, it was a I was time. clueless. I had no idea. These were all adult going ons and I yeah. wasn't privy to that, but, um, you know, whatever he did was all for the benefit of all of us. It was not oh, just sure. some side deal for him. He was going after it. And it was me a measly amount, like one or two percent of uh -huh. the the you know merchandise. It was it was nothing. Right, right. Wow, wow, that was a shame. Were you both kind of, you know, when you heard he's going away and Ron Harper's coming in, were you, you know, was it hard for you? Like yeah. just emotionally because obviously you had bonded pretty tight it yeah. was i mean it, it certainly it felt like almost the jumping the shark moment for the show and mm. but it was it was tough i was doing because i was doing double duty on days of our lives right and what was odd was his was ron harper's wife was on days of our lives with me at the time oh how weird. Ron, you know ron was from uh planet of the apes yeah, and, I you know, totally I mean, remember. You know, he's a nice guy, but I had to go back in the studio and re-record the theme song, which I sang the theme songs. <laughs> did you know, Kathy, that I sang the theme song, by the way? And, did you know <laughs> that I did all the casting for the Uncle Jack role? You, oh, well, aren't you just... Is that, is that true? I did. I sat in on every single reading. Oh, really? Wow. That is cool. That was nice that, that they went that route. I like that, that you were there. Yeah. Well, one of the I, reasons, one of the I reasons, sat on all these. I think that's why David made that joke about, well, you've sat on all those other laps. Because one time he goes, come sit on my lap. Because I did during the course of interviewing for all the uncles. I, they wanted this one scene. And in the scene, I sit on the lap and I say, you know, I'm really glad you're here. Or whatever the heck I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, if you watch the opening scene, the first episode of the third season, when we discover when our dad, we lose our dad, Kathy's performance. And I mean this as a fan of Kathy's, mm -hmm. it is so over. It's so powerful. This, the crying and the, the real emotion. I, I, I saw it recently and I, I forgot. Aftershock is the episode. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I ever saw it when it aired because back in the day, if you missed the Saturday morning, you didn't get to see the right. show. Right, you never saw it again, yeah. But boy, you know, it was pretty powerful. I saw it with you, Wesley, um, at Comic-Con San Diego, and it made me cry because I thought, how oh. weird is it? Not too many people, and of course, Phil makes fun of me. And he goes, are you crying again? You know, but <laughs> anyway, it because you people don't have footage of their emotions as a child. You know true. what I'm saying? That's that true. You don't have a recording of when your bike got stolen or if your parents went through a divorce, nobody was there filming it. Right. But it felt like I had a recording of something that was really painful to me and to watch it, I felt bad for me, you know? So yeah. it made me cry. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. That really is. Yeah. That really is. Yeah, because I could, I could see how I mean, especially at your age and, and then losing, you know, in essence, your second father, so to speak. That's, right. It was my nice. only one. Oh, it was only, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I did that. not. I was not raised with a father in the house. So he really was like my dad. Oh, my gosh. That is heavy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Kathy, and, Kathy and Spencer have a very, very close daughter, son, a daughter, father bond. It's it's really beautiful. Oh, man, that's great. Seriously, that's wonderful. Wonderful to hear. So, um, we, so we mentioned Ron Harper. Ron comes into the show. Um, what, how did you kind of make that adjustment as actors? I mean, it's a, it's kind of a big, big switch. I mean, I think Ron yeah. Ron is a great actor, but it's still a big switch. Well, it, first first of all, we we 
Because of a fire at Goldwood Studios with Sigma the Sea Monster, who shared our caves because they're both Sid Cross shows, Sid Marty. Oh, um, yeah. We, we no longer lived in our cave. We moved to the Lost City. So immediately well, right. we were yeah. in a whole different world. And, 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 and what happened third season it really became sort of a uh, guest star of the week, whether it was going to be Medusa or the Cyclops mm-hmm. or a, a Bonneville Snowman or some other character. So it, it took a different, different kind of tack. Also, Kathy was getting taller. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like eking up, she's almost taller than me. <laughs> By the way, she's a lot me, taller than me now. But, my uh, red checkered shirts, they uh, were, neat. they, uh, you know, it's come second season, I was rolling the sleeves. Yeah. Oh, how Because funny. they, you know, they had a budget. Well, one, yeah. one of the things I love, when, when you, that's, that's Kathy was auditioning, for, when Kathy was first auditioning for Land of the Lost, her mother dressed her for the audition. And it was almost exactly, the, they took what she was wearing for the auditions yeah. and made part of the character, right, Kathy? Really? Yes. Yeah, it was very similar what my mom had me in to go on the interview. I have a picture of myself actually um, that Sean Kenny took, by the way, Wesley. That it was Sean like a- you, you, you know Sean Kenny from from Star Trek. Oh my God! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. he's he's been photographing me since I was five, but he wow. took a picture of me about right. six months before Land of the Lost, and it's almost identical. The the she picture had, of had me the, had the braids. She in the, the clothes, braids. though, even the clothes oh are gosh, almost identical. Crazy. She had cords on. She had the it, yeah. It, they just took her look that, from the audition and duplicated it pretty much. Gosh, talk about like you were meant to be that role. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty darn close. Yeah. yeah, I was meant to have this family. You know, <laughs> I, I I guess that I was guess. A, that was that was it in a nutshell. Yeah. How did you? By the way, uh, you know, it's funny as a child actor. I mean, you, you've come out like so good, you know, I mean, we all have our ups and downs in life and everything like that. But I mean, as as a child actor, you really, you know, I don't know. It just seems like you you avoided a lot of that. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, boy. OK, read, read, wrong. read her book. I didn't read her book, but I know that you at eight, shame you on like you. The business, get, it, right? get it today. Run, Holly, run. It's on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what the heck? What? Ha- what? Oh, be- I have had I have had more things happen in my life than you can shake a stick at. Oh my gosh! It looked. I mean, in in like a quick like you know looking at brief or whatever interviews. I did not read the book. Um, I got the impression like, oh, you left acting and, you know, you went on and what were you like kind of dairy farm or something? <laughs> yeah, like that? I was a, a dairy farmer and a big farmer. Yeah, I was like, okay, wow. But- John, that's, let me, that's nothing. <laughs> let, me, let me just say this. Imagine blindfolded, left alone in the desert of Mexico. Read the book. <laughs> Read the book. Oh my gosh. You did you leave out the part for dead? <laughs> for dead. But also her book, I wow. mean, it's an amazing book, and it won um, best indie publication uh, when it first came out a couple of years ago. It won two major awards. And it's quite a ride. I mean, it's it's an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary tale. You will journey. be getting another mocha frap in the morning, Wesley. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the title of the book exactly? Why don't you run, say Holly? It? Run. Okay. All right. She That's stole it. my line in the show. I would sign. I sign my autograph. Run, Holly. Run. Because in the show, I'd go run, Holly. Run. There's right, a dinosaur. Right, right. There's a sleeve stack. There's a butt cootie. There's a it's a great title by the way it's a great title title. well because my life it was actually like a play on my life because i've been doing a lot of running (laughs) right but i like all kinds what's all kinds of slee stacks oh my the most important thing i think that we really i mean they get serious is that you know i had top billing with kathy you know <laughs> yes, he did. That. So, <laughs> Kathy, yeah, Post- we got to talk about that too, by the way. Because- Kathy, Kathy, Kathy's book is yeah. perfect. You mean that he he didn't have a last name? Exactly. I was okay, like, that's yeah. only because I read your mind. That's because the cross were too cheap for the last four letters. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> oh look, look, my thing is falling down here. Right here. Oh, it's green. Oh no, <laughs> I love the orange. We are oh, back yeah. up. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. So, so wait, Kathy, Kathy's book, Run Holly Run, is published, and she comes to me, Wesley, look, look, look at my book, and I looked at her book, and I go, oh, did you notice who has top billing on your book? Me. It's, oh. At the very top in small print is my quote. They asked me to review the book, and I did a quote, and so it's I have Wesley Ewer and my quote, and then Run Holly Run, Kathy Coleman. He <laughs> said, "I will but always did have get top, top billing." billing. That's right. That's right. Oh my gosh. I doubt. Yeah, I will definitely check it out. Cause I remember the other one you had, it actually, wasn't it like lost or something? Yeah, like lost that? girl. Lost but, girl. Uh, yeah. That's it. it. Yes. But let me tell you something, put on your big boy underpants to read my book. Cause it is a, it's a wild ride. Okay. I I'm, I will definitely be checking it out. Now you're kidding me. You got me so intrigued. I got it. I got to see it. <laughs> um, all right. Did, um, by the way, you were talking about like the, you know, the dinosaurs and, and, and this was like chroma key times. What did, how did you do that? Like, how did you get a sense of just how big they were, you know, and, you know, did they do anything to help you with that? Really? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you'd like me to take this question, you, you take it, Kathy. You take it. <laughs> yes, please, Kathy. Well, the only the only time I can speak on this is that the only time that I ever knew the actual size of something about about what I was going to be when they put the film and the video together mm -hmm. was when I was shooting the dopey scene because they actually had a a chroma key colored because it's like a um a cobalt blue color it's, wait, it's what wait, we wait, use Kathy, instead Kathy, of Kathy, green Kathy, screen Kathy, let me explain it first no wait no, i first, sat no, on no, the cylinder no instead of green screen we had chroma key blue which we had a, the whole sound stage half the sound stage the floor the ceilings were all blue and that's what disappeared like the green does now so yeah. we were on the chroma key set and it was the first time in history the dinosaurs were in film because they were stop frame animation and we were videotaped and they melded them together at the same time in real time. And it didn't work the first show. They thought it was, and they had to get Disney. <laughs> they had to get Disney. No, no, no. That's a turtle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted just to set it up because you were talking things that, so, so, so I do that all the time. I know. I, I get excited. I, I get excited. So Kathy is so, now, Kathy's on the chroma key blue. They have a sawhorse that's painted blue with a blue rope pulling it. No, it was a cylinder. Well, it was. It looked like a sawhorse, <laughs> and it would pull it. And she, now go. It was a cylinder, like a big round, like drum kind of thing, and I sat on it, and so. That is how they got me on the back of Dopey's back. But that's the only time I recall so, like specifics. But normally they just say up there at that light, uh, when we were on, on the stage, yeah, up I'm there at that light, that's where the dinosaur is. We want you to run this way. And that's how we were directed. But, but what was about this, going back to Kathy's Dopey thing, which is so cool, and people love the fact that she wrote Dopey, right. is that we were watching on videotape the animation of Dopey. Walking like this, and so they were watching it. The guys pulling the rope, and and so they're pulling it, and they got her shrunk down and set on top of the dinosaurs because it's all blue, right? So it looks like she's sitting on it, and they have to pull her in the same speed as as the animation is going, wow. and that's how they did it. It was we didn't have CGI back then, right? So exactly. it all it was state of the art for the seventies. It was it had never been done. And While I'm that, waving, because I'm going like this. Right. Know? That's amazing. That really is. I And, and especially if we're talking about like a, a, a Saturday, you know, kids show or whatever. I mean, that's way advanced. I mean, that's that's really amazing. And we, Sid told me his, the budget for Land of the Lost, I think was $50,000 an episode. 50000 Wow. And that we shot two a week. Each episode was shot in two and a half days. Oh, I didn't know that. Really? You guys did them that, that short a time? Yeah. Wow. Wow. How, how many episodes would you shoot in a season then? We shoot 14. 14. So basically seven weeks. Oh my gosh. That's pretty wild. So by yes, the way, so oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. 43 episodes, I think total. Okay. Did um, you mentioned, by the way, obviously that you were in days of our lives at the same time. How the hell did you do that? I mean, I mean, that's pretty wild to be doing 
you know, both. How, how did you do that? Well, it, I could only do it because they were both NBC shows and NBC agreed to let me do it. So for three years, I got to go into Days of Our Lives at NBC Burbank and film all my scenes on Days of Our Lives. And of course, the cast hated me because I would go in you know, seven weeks and I, I would get up, I'd do all my scenes and leave. And they were stuck the rest of the day and had to wait for me. And so then I would shoot my scenes in the morning on Days of Our Lives. Then I'd run over to Goldwyn Studios or General Services we, and I would film Land of the Lost. So in the morning, I'm crying that my girlfriend is leaving me and I'm having sexual problems and the mafia is after me. And in the afternoon, I'm going, run, Holly, run, there's a dinosaur. It was a little schizophrenic. Wow. It, wow. it was the best job. I mean, it was amazing. And, and, you know, it happened so fast. When I got the two series, I didn't even own a car. I, I'd come from no money to suddenly I had two TV series and I had to go buy a car to get back and forth. And uh, it all happened pretty quickly. Wow, that's seriously cool. What you know, by the way, the show itself was it originally meant to be so dark? Because I mean, it is a bit dark. Uh, it was. It's again, David Jones. Uh, it was written to be Swiss Family Robinson, a father and a son. Okay. You know, with jungles and stuff. And they brought so Sid. Star Trek had just finished at Paramount, and Sid ran into Gene Roddenberry. And asked Gene if he'd be the head writer on Land of the Lost. I have a new show. Would you do? Hey, I know you did a Star Trek or, you know, sci-fi. He's, and Gene says, I can't do it. I'm too busy. But I've got a new writer, a young guy named David Gerald. He wrote the episode Trouble with Tribbles. And he brought David Gerald on. And because David was on, it became sci-fi. He turned it from a Swiss family Robinson to this lost world. And he got writers like DC Fontana, Larry Niven, Spin Red, Walter Koenig, again, like Chekhov, who created wow. Eve, the talking space deck. And it became this sci-fi classic. It's wow. because of David. That's really, really wild. Kathy, obviously you, you were younger and you're on the show. Did it feel dark to you? No, no. Um, there were things at the time that, you know, I, I, I didn't understand as clearly as I do today because it, it was science fiction and it's pretty heady, but yeah. Um, no, I, I kind of, it's funny when you said that, I thought to myself, was it dark or, or was it just questionable? Like, you know, people asking questions about the universe and things like that. I, I kind of found it more inquisitive than dark. Like well, we was. were learn and, and adventurous. Like we were learning about like the, the Slee Stacks and, and, and their life through Enoch. He, he was like our teacher in many ways of how Land of the Lost started, how the, the flea stacks were in, in the past and humanity. I mean, there was like a lot of subjects that were more just of, you know, quizzical interest than, than dark. But you're, no, you're right. It was, it was dark. We had, it was a family that lost their mother. We dealt with loss of mom. Yeah. We, we, we dealt with the, oh, that the dying. <laughs> you know, it was, I mean, Saturday morning was, you know, Sigmund the Sea Monster and stuff. Yeah, suddenly, Johnny Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly we're dealing with life and death issues and can we survive and fighting elements and bonding as a family. And there's one scene I remember that uh, our mother appears in the mist doorway with it. And it turns out it's a sleaze tech impersonating our mother trying to, to lure us in to kill us. Oh, that is creepy. And so, again, it was the sci-fi. I know this because there's no CGI. I know the effects look, look hokey now. But if you look at the scripts and listen to the scripts with the, some of the greatest sci-fi writers like DC Fontana, you will understand how what, what amazing this thing was. But I remember Kathy and I were doing a scene and our mother was in the mist and we started to cry and stuff and they stopped. They came, I think it was Bob Lally, the director, and he came out and he said, listen, guys, he says, that was too real. This is Saturday morning. It's going to scare everybody because Kathy was like sobbing and it was, we were really holding each other and crying. And he said, just, just take it back a little bit. Just, you know, it's just too real. Oh, wow. That's really something that really shows you. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of how, how I, I felt though, is that it, it, yeah, I didn't mean dark, by the way, uh, Kathy, necessarily like, you know, voodoo. We didn't stab anybody or anything. Right, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, <laughs> yeah, At least that couldn't even catch us. Yeah, so. maybe a better, maybe a better uh, word would have been, it's kind of a heavy, there's a heavy, <laughs> there, there, you know, it's it's kind of. Well, a, David, David said, though, that 
he wasn't writing a children's show. He was writing an adult sci-fi show that was showed on Saturday mornings that aired on Saturday mornings. That's what his intent was. Right. Well, then I think that and Wesley add. always adds in. He never wanted to talk down to kids, you know? Mm hmm. Well, I mean, when you, learn, when you learn that the sleep stack are not from the past of Enoch, they're from the future. And Enoch needs to go back and warn his people that if they continue being this angry and hostile and fighting and, and that they will evolve into these giant lizard creatures. So it's suddenly because it, you think that from the past, everything flips upside down. And that was the incredible writing, the sci fi. There's an episode that DC Fontana wrote that's Kathy's favorite, where she meets her future self. Wow. And, wow. and there's a warning and a, it's just, you know, this wasn't a normal Saturday morning show for kids. No, oh, no way. No way. Yeah, it was definitely not. Definitely not. Kathy, why is that your favorite episode, by the way? What is it? Many reasons. Um, actually, the woman who played me as me in the future, um, she wrote the foreword to my book and it's a really beautiful little story. So when you get my book today, yes, note that. You'll but see um, it, it was just really a great episode. Um, mm -hmm. She became like a mentor to me and was very sweet. I just, there's a lot behind that, that story that, that just has uh, I have very fond memories about. It was a great episode. It's, it's actually a lot of people's favorite. They mm -hmm. really like it. Wow. Wow. But That's cool. I was going to say something that was kind of fun. Um, we recently did a show up in Seattle where people came and had breakfast with us and it was mostly guys, but there were a few women there and we were laughing because isn't it so funny with the modern technology that we have today that here we are almost 50 years later, there was just a screen between us back then and you were like eight or 10 years old and now we're sitting across from each other at this breakfast table and we're all in this moment and these guys it, it like they at first they didn't know they thought I was just babbling about something you know and then it hit them <laughs> shut up <Wesley. laughs> and then and then uh it started like they started really thinking about it and really it is. It's like we taught, we went through the pylon time doorway or something, you know, and yeah. here we are. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What do you, what do you think it is really for each of you? Why do you think the show has continued in its popularity? Because I mean, it's one of those shows that you, you, you mention it to someone and that it's like, Oh, I remember like there's a, there's an instant like passion <laughs> for it, like excitement. Magic. Yeah. What, what do you, honestly, what do you think it is? I mean, I, I realize, yes, it was kind of ahead of its time. You know, we're talking about the technology and everything, but what do you think it is that really is grabbing, not, you know, gravitating to people that it's still there 50 years later? I, for me, I think it was the relationship of the family. It was real. There was, it, it, it was, it was heartfelt. It wasn't, it was really about a family. We get, I cannot tell you how many people come up to our table and are crying literally crying and we go, you know, what, are you okay? And they go, let me tell you a story. And there was one guy that came up. He's, he was, he was in his fifties. And he said, listen, when I was a kid, my mom and dad were getting a divorce. And he said, in the third season, you lost your father and you got your uncle. He says, I was losing my dad. Oh, oh. And he says, I didn't think I could survive this. And I watched on land of the lost that your dad left, but you were able to continue as a family with your uncle and he gave me the strength to know that I could get through this. Oh and God. that experience is not uncommon when we're meeting people. We, we had, there was a, tell them about the blind couple that came to see us, Kathy. This, so. It was a couple um, that had both, they were in like a school for the blind and uh, their last memory. And this is what, what brought them together in friendship was that they used to watch Land of the Lost. And- um, they, both, they both lost their sight about the same time. Oh, they oh okay. Were, yeah. Were adults. <laughs> so. It's not I easy I said thinking, that. Kathy. It's just not easy. <laughs> I thought I said that. You didn't there. say it. <laughs> oh. So anyway, that was their common denominator. And anyway, so- Wow. Um, they, when they came up to my table, I was doing a show in, 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 uh, Rhode Island 
And they asked me, they, they started feeling, because I, I bring a slee stack head onto the table, and they started feeling the shape That's of so it. That's so cool, by the and way. They, and you could see that. the memories flooding in them. And then the woman asked me if she could touch me, and she just wanted to feel me. And wow. we wound up taking a picture with, with them, and she was like, oh, my gosh, you're so tall. Your hair is so long. She, she was just, like, trying to remember and also – dream about what I might look like, envision what I might look like today, you know, it's oh, really, wow. it was, it was really beautiful. They were smiling. They were crying. I was smiling. I was crying. It was really lovely. That's so cool. That really yeah, is. Yeah, we, we were in LA and to, a guy comes up to our table and says, I thought you guys spoke Farsi. What? He goes, yeah, I, my brother and I were from Persia before he was Iraq. And he said, you were dubbed into Farsi. And I ran. They, I ran. I ran. I'm so sorry. I ran. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I ran, Holly. I, I ran. ran. Run, I, Holly. I, run. I, I, I was you waiting on for Amazon. It. I, I was waiting for it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this guy, he said, my brother and I became scientists <laughs> of, of, of Land of the Lost. We moved to the States and they were two heads of Jet Propulsion Lab, JPL in Pasadena. Whoa. And they said, we'd like to give you guys a private tour of JPL. Well, oh, my gosh. So not only – so Kathy and I went, and they opened every door because it's all security levels. Yeah, it's heavy. And the yeah. last security level, which no one's allowed into except for very few people, and most people at JPL have never been in this room. We go into this room, and it's an empty room with computer banks all around. And way in the corner is one guy on a computer with the joystick. And he's the guy that has driven the Mars rovers. Every one of them. He has a Mars driver's license and he's a fan of the show. And he says, you want to drive the Mars Rover? Oh, come on. And I'm telling you. So we go to this guy, you know, there we are in this room and we're playing with the Rover. We're, we're looking on the monitor and all that stuff. And can we, you imagine letting me drive the Rover? <laughs> no. By the way, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And of course that was the Rover that crashed and burned, but that's a whole nother <laughs> story. Yeah. yeah. That's but, in the third book. Anyway. Exactly. Well, so obviously he's programming it. it they program it during the day. They send it to Mars overnight. It takes about eight hours. So what we were doing was not actually moving the Rover at the time. And he probably, and he, er not probably, he erased everything we did before we left, when we left, because we weren't actually, he wasn't directly moving the Rover, but we were, pro we were doing some of the programming. He was showing, he was saying here, we could see pictures. Here, the next day, we're going to go over this rock. Oh, is that cool? Well, I mean, those those kind of experiences, all because of this show that touched so many people in, in a profound and way. Wow. On that note about, you know, about me not being able to drive or me like being a cuckoo head, the, the role of Holly, though, was actually a very early female role of a woman that tackled problems and and solve them you know it was a I, I did a panel with excuse me a lot of women um that were like heroes and, and and women who who like other women looked up to because of the characters that they played and the doors mm -hmm. that they opened for other women to get roles just like Nichelle Nichols you know yeah sure and yeah. um I was on a panel with all those types of women Wow. And it was so weird. But you know what? Even as a young girl and even as Holly Marshall, if you look at like the, the scripts and the storylines, Holly really does come to the rescue quite, quite a bit. Yeah. No, I, I, I could totally see you, you having that uh, that image all these years later. Still, that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Wow. What a moment for you. To be on that panel. Oh, it, well, I was embarrassed because these women, you know, their costumes were these very sensual, sexy outfits, you know. And, yeah. and mine back in the day was, you know, a checkered shirt and cord, Levi cords. Yeah, but in a way, that was just so, a kid. Yeah, but that's what's so cool about it is there there was no, you know, trying to sexualize anything. I mean, you know, I, I, I read plenty of pl there's plenty out there where it says that, you know, Kathy Coleman was, uh, you know, so many young men out there, you know, you were like their first crush and all of that, but that's a, that's an awesome compliment on many levels because you, you know, like you said, you had your checkered shirt, you had your pigtails and whatever. It was like, you were just a real, a real girl, you know, like just doing, but I know. got, I didn't get like the teenage boys. I got the preteens that didn't know what was hitting them. 
They were like, I kind of like her and I don't know why (laughs) I want to go ride a bike with her. But, you know, kiss her that that's that's something I got to think about, you know. Right, right, (laughs) right. That's adorable, though. Um, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit about I'd like to hear about both of your backgrounds a little bit. Um, the so, Kathy, how did you start out in acting? How did how did it you know even come about? Well, my first job was in the theater. I was baby June in Gypsy. Oh, wow. And then my first professional job was a Shakey's Pizza commercial. Wow. And I was Goldilocks <laughs> in the commercial. Yeah, with the three. Oh, bears. It, it's on. It's on YouTube, and it just reran in Los Angeles last year. Okay, I will. Definitely- and then I went on to do. Oh, then I did like a bunch of commercials, and then I I was with a singing group for two years, and we did two national tours, and then I got Land of the Lost, and I had to quit the group, and then. The rest is sort of history. And then I did commercial work. But when you're an, a kid actor and you're like of normal, like size, you know, like I didn't look any younger than I was. I just looked like I was 15. Mm-hmm. And they can get an 18 year old that can look 15 and they sure. can get rid of social workers, uh, time refraints of, of how many hours I could work, you know. So. Restraint. That makes sense. That makes total sense, actually. Yeah. And then, uh, Wesley, I mean, I, I've read a little bit about yours as well. Very interesting as well. What? Wh- how did you start out and, you know, all of that? Well, I played an oak tree when I was five in Mississippi. <laughs> and I said to my family, they were all educators, I'm going to be an actor. And they go, yeah, right. Oh, my but God. No, I just I, I just put myself in school. And I mean, I would always be in shows and stuff. I, I met Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence. Uh, in Las Vegas, I was selling artwork after after school, and they needed a driver for a mobile home for a tour they were doing. They said, "We want you to come with us," and I went. And auditioned oh for, I auditioned for the American Shakespeare Festival at Stratford, Connecticut. <laughs> and no offense, I mean this in the best way, but I, that part actually does shock me a bit because you 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 said that you were like from like the South, right? Oh my God. I, I got the role to understudy Ariel of the Tempest. This, this was at Stratford, Connecticut, American Shakespeare Festival. Yeah. Some of the, Jane Alexander, some of the biggest performers in yeah. the world, right? Yeah. I get on stage. We rehearsed in New York for a month, and then we performed for nine months at Stratford. So wow. I get on stage. I got the script. I didn't know Shakespeare. I had never, you know, I auditioned. So anyway, I get on stage, and I go, all hail, grave master, grace the hail. I come to answer thy beck and call, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into That's the right. fire. And they go, That's what I was wondering. I mean, I didn't get that offensively, go, but you know. They go, Not on our stage. I go, What's wrong? And they go, Your accent. I go, What accent? Oh, my. Because they were all Julia. It was all the heads of Juilliard School of Music. Wow. They were producing wow. this. And they sent a linguist, Liz Smith. <laughs> she was this big bull of a lady. And every day I had to do. Instead of going running and jumping classes, I had to go running, jumping, ghosts, hosts. And the last day, the last day, I was, everybody was terrified of her. So nine months with her to get rid of my accent. And we're at the Actors Pub. There was a pub. And it was the closing night. And she's drunk. And she says, Wesley, darling. She said, the most regrettable experience I've had this entire season at Stratford has been to make you lose that wonderful accent. Oh, so, I, I asked Michael Kahn, who was head of Juilliard School of Music, and he was producing and stuff. And I said, why did you hire me? I mean, I'm 17, right? He goes, yeah. he goes, you blew the audition. You were horrible doing Shakespeare, but you made us laugh. We said, we want to spend the summer with him. And that's how they oh, gave him the job. <laughs> so That's so cool. That is so cool. Well, it's always like you want to work with people you enjoy, but that's really cool. So, okay, look, you can't mention Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence and not have me wonder. I mean, Robert Goulet was almost, I, I felt like he was like, very talented, but he was like one of those guys like you always thought of, hey, how are you? You know, that kind of thing he had going with as Robert, I'm Robert oh, Goulet. Yeah. Was he like that? He was he was interesting. He and Carol Lawrence were having kind of ups and downs in their relationship, and they were doing the musical "I Do I Do," which is a, a couple that falls in love, goes from there when they meet to their to they pass away in, in this musical. 
And it was, it was quite interesting because remember, I'm 17. I'm driving a mobile home that says the Bob Goulet show on it. At the end, <laughs> we'd do one week at a time in New York in, in Goober Gross Circuit. Carol would get in with the two kids and Bob and their manager, David Leland. And there I am, 17. I've never been to a big city like New York. Wow. And I'm driving this mobile home. And there were nights when Bob would get a little tipsy and go, I'm going to drive. And I go, no, no. He's going, I'm gonna, he would take over the steering wheel and sideswipe trucks. Oh, it was, my gosh. One night, one night that we were going in Rhode Island over a bridge and the, 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 the mobile home just wouldn't go, just stopped. Oh, it was the middle of the night because we left after the show was over for the, the end of the performances. It's like two in the morning. I pull over to the side. He goes, I'll take care of it. And he goes and hitchhikes a ride. And he's gone hours, for hours, hours. He comes back and Carol and the kids are there. There'd been a knock on the door. And I got, I said, back, back, everybody back. And it was the highway patrol. They'd seen the Bob Goulet show and they wanted to check on us. Oh, he comes my. back later and he's, he's a little drunk and he, he met some truckers. He went and had, had a couple of drinks with the truckers, convinced one of them to come back to help fix this, mo- this, 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 his van. And uh, the guy opens the hood. It's just a pin. He goes, ah, right, he fixes it. We drive on. But he, oh, he was great. God. And every, I remember, because remember, I, I started, I was in Vegas. I, you know, I didn't, I just wanted to be an actor. Every time I'd run into Bob, uh, he would go, did you go back to college? Did you, did you go back to college? Because I'd been one year at UNLV. And he goes, I go, no, no, Bob. He goes, you should go back to college. I said, uh, Bob, I, 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 I have three television series. <laughs> he was great. And Carol Arntz to this day is just delightful. Wow. That's really cool. That's really cool. Kathy, who were you, um, you know, during that time that you were, you were doing your auditioning, who were you going up against? Were the, the, you know, who were some of the other, uh, I guess, you know, uh, child actors that were around you during that time that, you know, you kind of saw go on to do their thing. Well, a week prior to land of the lost auditions, um, I went up for a show called run Joe run, which actually wound up airing before land of the lost did. Um, but anyway, I went up for this one episode on run Joe run and, you know, like all the other interviews, there's about 150 girls that go up sure. and then it gets down to, you know, the callbacks and smaller groups. And the final callback was Christy McNichol and myself. Oh, and wow. she got the part. I didn't. But it shot like the interview say was on a Thursday. It shot the following Wednesday. The auditions for Land of the Lost were on Wednesday. Had I got that one day shoot on uh run Joe run. I would have missed the audition for land of the lost. And, you know, wow. Talk about things meant to be. That's so cool. That's really cool. By the way, what's the deal with, uh, and maybe it's all BS. I don't know, but I saw that both of you, I saw something where you like, you were battle for like the last look on the show. Is that true? Or was that like a thing? Absolutely true. He's a camera hog. (laughs) <laughs> he would push me in the bushes and then turn around to the camera and say, run, Holly, shove me in the bushes and then turn around <laughs> like he was looking for whatever was chasing us. I was Guilty. concerned. I was concerned for your well-being. Kathy. I, I want to make sure you yeah. were eaten by a dinosaur. Oh, is that but as the, uh, that was the first season. First season. And, and I just I just kept going into the bushes. You know, <laughs> I didn't know any better. But as the years progressed, and the other thing that he would do is always wanted the last line. So he'd say, run, run, Holly, and push me in the bushes. And then he'd say something like, we got to get going. And then if you notice in the second ones, I'm like, I'm going as fast as I can, Will. (laughs) Then I'd say that, then he'd say something. And I go, I would get the last word in. I would say something, uh, even if I had to say, ah, like that as I was falling into the bushes. (laughs) <laughs> you know she may have been 11 years old but she caught on quickly <laughs> well, quickly that's funny i oh, i always wondered about that that is hysterical we we had pranks though wesley and i all throughout the season so we could only we, we couldn't do too too many because of the budget because they they're rolling tape and and we get in trouble but we still did some that were really really funny okay come on like what tell me tell me tell me one or two come on 
Well, one, it's kind of naughty, but it was really funny. And and oh, cool. everybody on the uh, set was there. My mom, the welfare worker, was a, wasn't like bad, bad. Right, right. But right. it was in a scene where Spencer is being seduced by the, the czar and has created this 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 woman for him. And, 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 and she's like calling him to leave the cave, you know, and it is, and he's like sleepwalking almost. And so he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's all like in a hypnotic state and he starts leaving the cave and we both wake up, you know, Will and Holly both wake up and we're like supposed to say, whoa, look at where's dad going. Maybe we should follow him. And instead of saying that Wesley goes, whoa, dad's leaving the cave. And I open up my sleeping bag and Wesley jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Me Too movement, everybody. The Me Too movement. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Seriously. Oh, Seriously. And, and everybody on the set just fell out laughing. Oh, they, they, I mean, come on. I love, I love okay. moments like that. One time, this was another one, but it was Spencer was behind this one, and it was classic. Like, again, the budget was always at the front and for, forefront of everybody's mind. Yeah. So Spencer gets a hold of the graphic artist on the set and has him paint a slot machine on his chest, like his bare chest. Oh, no. no. So we're supposed to do a scene where we dive into the the lot I think it's the pond that goes into the lost city caves or whatever and we we run up to the pond and we we strip down out of our clothes and we just so happen to have bathing suits on you know right and um and Wes uh, Spencer takes off his shirt and he's got that slot machine painted <laughs> on his chest with cherries and plums and lemons Oh God! And we all start because we were nobody knew about it, but it was really funny. But oh. Sid and Marty had the heads of NBC there that day. Oh jeez! And that went over like a lemon, a plum, and no cherries. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, yeah, it was bad. They, yeah. they were like, "This oh, is what you guys do with our money," you know. Oh jeez! It was bad. So we got we got scolded, but it was Spencer. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, though. Oh my Pop god! Pop said to take the wraps on that one. Oh, that's great. Talk about talk about. You got to have some guts. I mean that that's pretty good. That's a good. <laughs> I like it. Um, one other thing, uh, Wesley, uh, the um, the organic vegetables. I'm sorry, I had to talk a little bit about that. What they what? I mean, look, I know I've heard a lot of stories about Bob uh, Rafelson and you know yeah. uh, who co created the monkeys and all that. Was he like, I know he was like on his own little, you know, wavelength, very talented guy, but what the heck? I mean, the organic vegetables, what was that? Well, it was the show to follow the monkeys and it was starring Kay Ballard and it was, uh, she opened a, a organic food restaurant store. It called the, Org oh. and we were the waiters and waitresses oh. and we also I formed a band and I became the lead singer drummer of the band. And so we started filming. It was sold. It was a on the air sold thing. And we started filming around Los Angeles. We're doing all everything a la monkeys, jumping out of trash cans, running around fountains. What a blast. Doing all yeah. that stuff. And then there was a writer's strike, a huge writer's strike that year. And they canceled the shows. So Kay Ballard, of course, from Mothers in Law and, and all these wonderful things. Yeah. I, had ne I never met her because we, we, we were doing all the singing and everything before. Because I'd been recording for Motown right before that. Uh, yeah, I saw so, your tie-in with Bobby Sherman, which is in a whole nother. Yeah, thing. Bobby. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, I go to a party here in Palm Springs, and and Kay Ballard's here, and I have, she and I go up to her, and I, I, I she's sitting down, I get on my knees, and I say, "Excuse me, Miss Ballard, I'm Wesley York," and she goes, "I know who you are." I said, "You've been on my resume for over thirty years, and we've never met." Wow. And she and I became like best friends until she passed away uh, here in Palm Springs. Oh, but, that's uh, cool. Yeah, Bobby Sherman. I recorded with Bobby when I, 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 I ABC was replacing David Cassidy and the Partridge Family, and they yeah. had me come in to to be one of the guys. So I had to. Bobby went to Bobby's house, recorded a song, lip sync it for ABC, got the job to replace Bobby. I mean, to play, replace uh, David at the Partridge Family, and uh, he was leaving the show because yeah. he, he was quitting. So they're going to write him out going to college. I was the next door neighbor with a, a single dad. 
he was going to go to college. I was going to, they were, they, my dad was going to marry Shirley. I was going to become the lead singer of the Partridge family. Well, wow. he heard I was doing it. So we all knew each other. He goes, I think I'll stay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, are you serious? Do you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I have a lot of that. I, you know, I have a lot. I, I signed a contract to host the Tonight Show in Australia out of Melbourne. And then the government said, we're not going to let an American host the Tonight Show. And I met with the government, the heads of, of, of Australia. Oh and they gosh, go, no, what? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so oh, wow, just took amazing. my shrimp off the Barbie real quick. That is crazy. I heard, I read another thing that in when, uh, season four, which did not happen, I guess, for the Partridge family, that Rick Springfield was going to be brought in. Had you yeah. ever heard that? No. I, I, I didn't, but I, I know I got the job. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, not because I think he came back for season three. I think that's when he came back. I think that's when David yeah. Cathy came back. And then I think it was the season after then Rick Springfield was going to jump in. So they must have been using that, you know, those moments. But well, they were desperate. To, I mean, the show yeah. was the show was such a hit. And Bobby, I mean, Bobby, keep going, Bobby Sherman. But uh, uh, David wanted to leave. Yeah. You know, and they were like panicked because that was, a you know, they're making lots of money back then. Well, he was huge. Yeah, he was huge. huge. That would have been a heck of a moment for you. What a moment we were, for you. We were all kind of friendly back then. I remember there was, uh, you know, all, all the teen idols, because it was a smaller world back then. And I remember one day Sean Cassidy and Leif Garrett uh, come wow. and swim in my swimming pool. I just rented a pool, a house with a pool. I had money. I read it. And they came swimming. I got a great picture of all of us. And, I'm sorry. That's crazy. You know, but that was, and this before Sean even had his first series. Wow. So uh, he was just David's brother. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. You both have had some interesting, really interesting backgrounds. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool that you, you've been in it. Um, well, I, I guess we better end on, on a land of the lost moment at, at least. Um, Kathy, you said that that was your one of your favorite uh, episodes. Is there another? And then I'll, I'd like to hear the same from Wesley, what your favorite was. What, what do you think? Um, favorites? I did like um, I did like some of the ones where we were in like dream sequences where we got to change and wear different costumes like we were in a civil war um, period in one and then um, there was one where we were stuck between two universes and when I was pushed through the universe I came out with a yellow shirt and tan pants and wow. um just there was just uh, that that one caveman outfit that we got to wear. There's just that was that was just fun. But you know what? I used to come to the set every morning and go walk in the door, and I I would look and see what they had moved around the night before and what was going to be the the fun thing to do that day. And we had two sound stages. You know, one was the interior and one was the exterior, and they were huge. They were literally jungle gyms. Wow. For, for, wow! I mean, a kid could not ask for a better set to work on. You know? Wow! And wow. Um, it, it was just a, full of adventure. So every day was special being there. And I, I also was good friends with the prop master. I was good friends with the makeup and the wardrobe people and my teacher, of course, I loved her. And then there was Phil, who he and I ran around and got into every ounce of mischief we could possibly find. I love that. I just, we had a blast. And they did. That's pretty cool. Well, and Wesley, did. how about you? What do you Mine think? Was the, it was the last episode of season one called The Circle. And they wrote this episode not knowing that there'd be a season two. Oh. And it's, people asked, did we get out of the land of the lost? And then the last episode of season one there's a there's an anomaly happening the land of the lost there's a loop happening and we're we're in enix cave and, he, and there's a time in this doorway and he says and and it keeps repeating itself and i and i go he, he says i said enix you mean we can go home he says no you must go home three must leave so three may enter otherwise the land of the lost would explode so the three of us marshall will and holly we we go through the time doorway and immediately our doppelgangers come into the land of the loss and it begins all over again. So the end of the episode is us, like we're the first, we're looking around, oh my God, there's a cave, there's dinosaurs, and it all begins again. And that was so in case there wasn't a second season. Oh and wow. that also happens to be the episode where Spencer had the slot machine. <laughs> so <laughs> where we, we took our clothes off and jumped in the lagoon. 
how appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate both of you. I mean, I it just was so much fun talking with you. you you're just, uh, you know, you're just both hysterical, <laughs> but uh, I, I, as, a, as, as a fan of the show, I, I also loved, you know, having you on and um, anyway, just, just thanks a bunch. And I wait, wait, know, wait, 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 wait. Uh, and I got to go. Here we go. And you I really got to go. No. Are you ready, Kathy? You ready? What? Will, hey. Will and Holly. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Go back. No, okay. We have to sing the thing. Of course, there's going to be a delay, right? So it's a well, delay. I know. I know. No, I want to hear it. One, two, three. <laughs> Marshall, so Will, Will and Holly. Holly. On a routine expedition, expedition. Met, the met the greatest earthquake ever known. Ever known. High on, on the rapids, the rapids it struck their tiny raft and plunged them down, down a thousand feet below to the land, the land of the lost. lost. To the land of the lost. And then Grumpy goes, roar. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. I loved it. It's All hard right. with Zoom because everything's like off. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But it makes it even more fun, actually. Yeah. It's kind of cool. So, no, thanks for doing that. It's so funny. I had that I had that in my head the whole time we we're talking. I'm like, I really want them to do the theme song. I really want them to do it. We've talked so long that I totally forgot. But um, anyway, thanks a bunch. You guys are just terrific. And I hope one of these days I actually see you at uh, one of the conventions for sure. Because I, I, I'd enjoy that for sure. So you have to get you in the raft. You have to go yeah, on a routine expedition. Exactly. Oh, I would. Are you kidding me? I'd get in the raft in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> I want the direction you. too. But thank yeah. you. Yes, doing, of course. Thank you for doing your homework too. You were a great interviewer. So we really appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Oh. It was a pleasure to do your show. Absolutely. Thanks. Oh, a thanks a right. bunch, guys. That means a lot to me. It really does. I, I Anyway, I, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you. Okay. Right. Hey, I'm signing off. All Love right. you. Love you, Kathy. Bring, oh, bring me, bring me a Frappuccino tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video. And if you like the video, please hit the like button as well. And while you're here, take a look at some of the other great interviews from anybody from Jerry Mathers to Butch Patrick to Judy Norton. All fantastic. Have a great one.